you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, I lift my voice in worship as I praise your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. There is no one else You are great You do miracles So great There is no God Like you There is no Give you all the praise. Shahate lebrano sakata la badayash. Zezut etale brani uskota la badayash. Lord, we ask that you, we come and have your way in our midst this very day. We ask, Lord, that you will prove yourself again. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. One more time, can we put those hands together for Jesus? Is worthy to be praised. Is worthy to be praised. Is worthy to be praised. Go ahead, continue to do that for Jesus. Glory to Jesus. I want us to also celebrate the woman of God who brought that word for us tonight. Very powerful. Very powerful. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, in alignment with the word that she brought to, to us, she came to speak to us. God bless you. May please be seated. You know, she came to speak to us this morning, this evening rather, about the Word of God. The role that this Word of God plays in our heart, 
very powerful word. I was able to capture about 11 things from all that she said. I mean, written down. That the word of God can transform us. That the word of God can rebuild whatever that has been scattered. And I decree every life here that has been oppressed. Every life here that has been scattered. You are receiving a rebuilding tonight in the name of Jesus. She said to us that the word of God is an assurance. There is nothing more reliable than the word of God. Again, she said the word of God can create what does not exist. The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was God. There was nothing that existed without the word. In John chapter 1. And as we speak the word of God, you become that word. Meaning what you speak is what you become. Praise Jesus. The word of God is also a scanner, she said in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. And we are a product of our own word. We must speak like kings. We must speak like kings. The word. King has vocabularies. There are certain things a king doesn't say. There are certain things a queen would not say. I, I have not ever heard a king say he lacked before. I've never heard a queen say that they lacked before. Anytime they have a need, they demand for it. They are people of authority. and They know how to use their authority. Let our word reflect who we are, she said. We prove that we are a heir of God's kingdom by the way that we speak. Again, she said the word of God is our sword in the days of battle. Tonight, I want to bring the word of God to you again. Maybe this word will equip you. Maybe this word will transform you the way you think. Maybe this word will be a scanner for you. Maybe this word will just reposition you for what God is about to do in your life. Maybe this word is just going to create an atmosphere of peace, of favor around of your life. Maybe this word is capable of creating what does not exist. But I want you to be assured that the word of God does not go without fulfilling the purpose for which God has sent it. Very quickly, I want to bring the word of God to us tonight on practical steps to hearing the voice of God practical steps to hearing the voice of God. If we can work on this sound a little bit, that will be fine. God bless you. Practical steps to hearing the voice of God. You know, often, many times you hear people say that, I find it difficult. How can I hear the voice of God? How do I even know that God is speaking to me? Some people say that they are confused. Some people say that they are not sure if it is God who is speaking to them. I've, I've lost count how many people say to, to me that, Pastor, I want to be able to hear God. I want to be able to hear the voice of God. And maybe there are some who have been enjoying this benefit but have been so in one place that they are yet to move to the next phase that God intends for them in hearing the voice of God. Three things we want to address. One, how do I hear the voice of God? Two, how do I know it is God who is speaking to me? And three, what do I do after hearing the voice of God? She spoke to us about the word of God. The word of God is also the voice of God. How do I receive that voice? How do I receive that word from God? And how do I, I mean, know that this is God speaking to me? Praise God. And this, I believe, is the challenge of majority of Christians. Average Christians will tell you that God cannot speak to them. I've been in situations where people believe that, you know, God has to speak to their pastor. Of course, God does speak to, to your pastors. But the Bible tells us about a man called Samuel, a boy. At that time, he was young. And there was Eli, the senior prophet. But God bypassed the prophet to speak to the man of God. When you hear the voice of God the first time, the Bible said he couldn't recognize it. He felt it was the voice of his father. And he went and he said, Father, did you call me? He said, no, I haven't called you. And the second time he went to sleep and the voice came again. And I was wondering, why is it that it is only when this boy wants to sleep that the voice was coming? Why didn't the voice come in the busy schedule of the day? We'll be looking at this in series as God will be helping us. Because everyone deserves to hear the voice of God. Four things I want to say to us today about the voice of God. Four things you would like to take note of and more. So like I said, we'll be handling these three questions. 
So everything we are going to be discussing will be centered around these three questions. Because people feel that God doesn't speak to them. And the reason many people are not very close to God is because of the inability to receive from God. Number one thing I would like to say about God's voice is that hearing the voice of God is not a luxury. It's not a luxury that some have access to and some cannot have access to. I believe this is something that is mandatory for every Christian, every child of God. As long as you are born again, hearing the voice of God is not a luxury. If it was a luxury, I'm sure certain people would never have access to the voice of God. People who come to you and they say they heard God speak to them. It's not a thing of luxury. It's not something that you should begin to pride about it. Intimidating other people. Do you know I hear the voice of God? Do you know God spoke to me? You, you can't hear the voice of God. You make other people feel like you, are, you have more of God than they have God. God's servant was speaking to us some time ago. He said, God, they say that no man has the monopoly of God. Meaning we all have equal access to God. And how do I know this? The Bible tells me in Hebrews, it says we should come boldly through what? The blood of Jesus. Not through your pastor. It's not going to be through your mother. That means God wants to speak to us. The Bible tells us in Genesis that God created man. And the purpose that God created man was for fellowship. God wanted to interact with man. God wanted to rub shoulders with man. God wanted to bring man to his level. And no wonder he said, let us make man in our own image. Let us bring man to our level. Our level of reasoning. Our level of thought. Our level of operation. Hallelujah. Hearing the voice of God is a necessity for every genuine child of God. I'm still on number one. It's not ever a luxury. It's not something that some should have access to and some don't have access to. We look at that in John chapter 10, verse 27. Jesus speaking, he said, my sheep hear my voice. They know me and they follow me. He said, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. His sheep, meaning every child of God have access, equal access to the voice of God. Pastor, pray for me. I want to know what God is saying. As much as that is not bad, your pastor cannot become your God. Hallelujah. Am I speaking to someone today? As much as your pastor is called by God, your pastor is baptized by God, I want to show us something in the scripture about a man of God I just mentioned, Samuel. When Samuel came, the Lord said to him, go and anoint for me the man that I've chosen. And you saw that that man missed the voice of God almost ten times. When he saw the first child, he said, oh, this is indeed the one that the Spirit of God is upon him. But God said, no, this is not him. I have not said, said so. And then he tried a second time. He tried a third time. After three times, it's no longer a mistake. It's no longer a mistake. He tried it more than three times. At this point, this was the, F, I mean, the error in a man manifesting itself. Until he had no option. And then he had to ask the father of David, is there still any other one? At this point, I don't know what God is saying again. So there are certain situations that God wants to speak to you one on one. And there are certain things that God will hide from your prophet. As much as God will speak through your pastor to you, there are other things God wants to speak to you by yourself because of conviction. I mean, God would have chosen a prophet to speak to Abraham concerning the covenant. Abraham would never walk in that covenant. So I'm talking about things that will change your life. The kind of voice that when you hear you say, I know that what? My redeemer lives. It's not only based on what the pastor is going to preach for you. This has to do on your personal work with God. And we are talking about that very quickly, very soon. Amen. So this voice of God, I'm introducing us to, and for some of us, we are already used to that voice. We've been hearing that voice. And for some, you have lost contact with that voice. But God is reconnecting you today in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, my sheep listen to my voice. And they hear me. They know me. And they follow me by listening to my voice. Number two, 
God's voice communicates his will. God's voice communicates the love of God. It communicates the emotions that God has for us. The feelings of God towards you. The desires and the plans of God. No wonder Jeremiah 29 verse 11, the Bible says, For I know the plans that I have towards you. I know how I feel towards you. I know my desires towards you. He said they are plans of good and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. But the question is, how do I get to access that plan? Knowing that God has a plan for you is one thing. Accessing that plan is another thing. Knowing the details of that plan is yet another thing entirely. And I tell you, you can't depend on your pastor for such. Yes, your pastor is born again, fire filled, casting out devils, speaking in tongues. But there are certain things your pastor would not be able to do for you. They used to say that you can force a horse to a river, but you can't force it to drink water. So, it communicates the will of God for your life. How much God loves you. If I come and say to you, God loves you, that's from me. When you go out, you say, my pastor say God loves me. But when you hear God say to you, my daughter, my son, I love you, it, it comes with a sense of conviction. When you go out and you are saying such, so, you say, I know what God said to me. God told me that he loves me. I mean, that is stronger than my pastor saying. There's a third party there. The pastor can mix it up. Of course, maybe God is saying, tell him that I love him so much. And then he comes to you and he says, God said I should tell you that his love for you is full. He has said two different things. But when you receive it, you receive it directly from God. You know what God is saying to you. God wants to speak to you. And until you are able to master the voice of God, you will continue to err in life. Error will be around of you. Errors everywhere. And the life that is filled with error has no successful result. So God wants to communicate that love to you. There are many people who say, you know, I don't know if God loves me. Not because they have not heard their pastor said it before. But because it has not become real to them. First John, I mean John chapter 1, the Bible said, and he be, the word became flesh and it dwells amongst us. Meaning the word of God must become a revelation to you as a person. And that revelation can come, of course, when the pastor is preaching, reading from the word of God. Many times I've heard my spiritual parents speak to me and I could hear another voice, the voice of God through them. And I could identify that Kai, this voice is different today. Something is re-echoing. So yes, God will speak through them. But there is a voice that when you hear it, you cannot doubt. When Moses heard that kind of voice, he couldn't doubt it. The Bible said the fire was burning and it was not consuming. And Moses said, what kind of fire is this? And out of that fire came the voice of God. And this kept him. Even when the situation was hard. That's why your Christianity cannot just be based on what you hear online alone. And we're going to be sharing a lot, a lot, a lot about this. Number three, God's voice come to sharpen or rather to shaping our lives for good. To shape your life, to mod model your life in the plans of God. For he said the plans that I have for you, they are of good and not of evil. So, the word of God comes so that it can align you according to his will. He wants to properly position you. For example, maybe God has planted blessing for you here. And then you come, because you see at that moment things are not going well there. You feel like, no, blessings of God cannot be there. But God has told you, go there. Like he said to Abraham, he said, leave your father's house. Your father's house are the things that will deny you access to the voice of God. To the leading of God. He said, leave your father's house and go to where I will show you. Abraham didn't ask where. He just went. Why? He heard the voice. He was convinced this is the voice of God. And I know somebody is receiving that voice that will direct their life today. In the name of Jesus. If you are that person receiving that voice, your amen will be louder. In the name of Jesus. Number four. God's voice come to give meaning and purpose. To our existence some people live because they want to eat drink 
and sleep and wake up. Some people live because they want to have money. Some people live for different reasons. But the only thing that gives meaning to our life and purpose to our existence is when we can clearly hear God's voice for our life. And again, hearing the voice of God is not a one-time affair. It's a lifetime affair. It's something you will do, have to do with all the days of your life. So I want to share with us very quickly some practical steps. And these are steps that I've tried personally that works for me that also I have learned from the people that God has put in my life. I mean, that I look up to. That I see how they are able to deploy the voice of God guiding their lives. And that's why I've not seen error in their life. I've always seen that when God spoke, he brought to pass. When God said, let there be, there was. There was nothing like, you know, this, you know when creation happened, it was God who spoke, right? He said, let there be. And the Bible said, there was. The thing that was supposed to bring it to pass they didn't say, I didn't hear you well. And that was, that was Jesus himself. He didn't say to God, God, can you come again? As God spoke, it came to pass. That's why he said, I and my father are one. When God speaks, it just passed through you. Instantly. And that's what the word of God does, like she taught us. So I'm going to be sharing with us some practical steps. But I will deal with just one for today, for tonight. So that we can pray and allow it to, you know, settle in us. And on Sunday, we would continue and we would continue until it is clear to you that God is speaking to you. Until it is clear to you that the voice of God is a constant in your life. In sciences, there are certain things that are called constants. The opposite of constants are variables. Variables can change. But when something is constant, it doesn't change. And that's what God says. Say, I am not man. I am God. I don't change. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. So the voice of God must be a constant. It must be a regular event in our life. When we wake up, when we sleep, when we are doing anything. We are in classroom, when we are preparing for exams. I remember there was a year, I think I was studying, preparing for exam. I wasn't praying at this time. And then in the midst of that studying, suddenly my eyes opened, I saw a vision. And the vision was showing to me what was going to happen and was going to affect a member of my family. And immediately I took my phone. And I called home. I said, please, I saw this. For this period, please, nobody should go around this area. Because of what I saw. I saw an explosion around this area. And then I think it was a week or thereabout. And then they called me and said, oh, what you saw is true. Why? Because one of the relatives who was staying with us was on her way to school. And on her way to school, there was a petroleum tank ahead of them and she was in the vehicle behind and while they were going for no reason this petroleum tank just exploded so if they were very close to that or I don't know how they would have gone so the voice of God saves us from disaster it puts us ahead of our adversary it puts you even ahead of yourself that's what the voice, voice yourself I mean is what is going on in your mind I'll read the scripture for us very soon and you will understand why the, the reason why many of us can't walk with God is because we are too carnal. We are too carnal. We rationalize things too much. When you hear God speak, you are thinking, how is it going to be? Of course, I'm not trying to say you will not think like that. But after that thought, Mary said, how would this be? And then she pondered on it. When, after saying that, she said, well, God, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Number one practical step is that you must have a relationship with God. It starts with a relationship. The bedrock of you hearing God clearly, following the leading and the instructions of God for your life is that you must have a relationship. And when we talk about relationship, we are talking about partnership. We are talking about something that has to do with two or more people. Relationship is not just for one person. Relationships is between two or more. So a relationship can be husband to wife relationship, father to son relationship, um, son to sister, I mean a brother to sister, not son to sister, brother to sister relationship, son to father, or friend and all those kind of, there are so many kinds of relationship these days. Praise the Lord. So, how is your own relationship with God? Now, many people 
relate with God on different platforms. There are some people that see God as the consuming fire. And that is what they work with. There are other people that see God as a loving friend. That is how they relate with him. There are some who see God as a friend. As a friend. Jesus was speaking to them. He said, I have told you everything. What I have told you, a master doesn't tell a servant. Meaning our relationship status is changing now. And somebody's own is changing today. In the name of Jesus. Because the reason you are not able to hear the voice of God clearly, according to that scripture, is probably because you are still seeing it as master and slave. Which is not bad. Because Apostle Paul made mention of that. But not in a way that it is affecting you positively. You feel that, oh, God is there. I can't reach him. You hear many Christians, they say, no, mine, I just want to go to church. Oh, I just want to pray. I just want to be a normal Christian. What is normal ab about being a normal Christian? Did I put that correctly? What is good about being a normal Christian? What are the benefits of being a normal Christian? Have you ever met somebody and they told you that because I was a normal Christian, so, 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 and so mighty things happened to my life? No. He said, and he wrought mighty things through them. Why? Because they went in the power. They were extraordinary people. They walked in the supernatural. They refused to be normal. And you are refusing to be normal from today in the name of Jesus Christ. So how do you relate with Jesus? Jesus told them, he got to a point, he saw that they were not hearing him well. But he was speaking. Because God is always speaking. But we don't hear. Because of the way we see him. We see him as a distant God. Some people think that God is somewhere in the sky. Where is God? I asked someone one time, and I asked the brother, I said, do you know that God can speak to you? He said, no, it's not possible. I said, really? Then I asked him another question. I said, where is God? He said, God is everywhere. Then I said, what is he doing everywhere? <laughs> what is he doing everywhere? You see, we have half knowledge. And that's the deceit of the devil. You are taking this church thing too serious. If it is worth taking, take it serious. If it is worth doing, then you have to take it seriously. If there's anything that we must take serious in our life, is our relationship with God. And then Jesus looked at them. He said, look, I've been speaking to you, but you see me as if I'm a master. Is that not what they called him? Master. 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 Because they had this wrong idea of master. Not that calling him master was wrong. Of course, by hierarchy, he's their master. So when you begin to call your pastor, pastor, pastor with a wrong understanding, you, you alienate yourself completely from the benefit of relating with that person. When your pastor becomes your God, every little thing, you take your phone and say, Pastor, what is God saying? Pastor, what is God saying? Pastor, what is God saying? Meaning you can't ever have a relationship with God. You have di di disengaged yourself completely from the blessings that is even attached to the life of that person. So when Jesus saw that was going to happen, he said to them, he said, see, I've told you many things. I spoke to you in parables. You didn't understand. I explained it to you. Now, let's change this relationship status. We are no longer master's friend. We are friends. Master, um, slave. Now, we are friends. And until that time, look at the life of Peter. That was when Peter began to ease up with him. That was when Peter would stand up and rebuke Jesus. How would you rebuke your master? You can only rebuke a friend. Praise God. How many of us, would, I want somebody to live here today and come to the point of dialogue with God. You don't dialogue with a master. Of course, God is your master. Don't get me wrong. But when it came to the point of dialogue, Abraham switched from master slave and he switched to friend. And they began to have communion. You see, your relationship with God is not one-sided. It's not, it's not something that you say, oh, me and God, though, we are just friends, that's all. No, there are many things that will happen, you have to switch it. Then there are other times you need a father, you turn to him. And that is why the Bible makes us to understand that God has to be our everything. Everything. Your father, your brother, your friend, your confident, your best friend, your everything. Hallelujah. And then when they wanted to relate with him as master, they go to the master position. They relate with him. 
When it's time to relate as a friend, you step into the friendship and you relate with him. When it's time to relate with him as a father, you step into the position of a son and you relate with him. So you, we have all these things that we are not utilizing. Many have been working in one of it for long. That's why you pray many times. You pray about one thing. Quick answer. You pray about another thing. No answer. Because you are praying with the wrong relationship. You don't understand me. You are coming from the wrong platform. When it is time for me to ask a friend for a favor, how do I ask a friend for a favor? Jesus gave that illustration. He said that there's, there are two friends. One had a visitor and he needed to feed the visitor and then he went to his friend and he knocked on the door. At what time? Middle of the night. Jesus was speaking a parable to us. He said even though that man would not wake up at that time because of the relationship, if somebody else came, he would not open. When I call you at 12, there are some calls I see at 12, I must speak it. But there are other calls I see, I say, well, not that important. Relationship. And that's how it is. When you are relating with God as a son and a father, when you need friendship, you can't get it. Because God is trying to bring you into the space of friendship and you are still struggling to be his son. I'm not saying being the son of God is bad. But I'm telling you that there are different situations in life and you have to be dynamic in connecting with him. When it's time to be a friend, I speak to God. The way I speak to God sometimes, myself, I will question, are you, are you sure this is God you are talking to? Is he your mate? But there is a peace I feel inside of me when I talk like that. And there are other times I go on my knees. I say, Father, because it requires son-father relationship for that to happen. I see somebody's life is about to be transformed today. You begin to relate with him according to how he wants you to relate with him. He said, I no longer call you slaves, but now I call you friends because now it's time to be friends. Let's talk friendship stuff. And that is why, as a friend, who is your best friend? Is there anything you hide from your best friend? Nothing. You go to him and say, Jesus, I misbehaved today. It's not good. I don't like it. I'm not proud of myself. You see the way I spoke to that lady the, that, that afternoon. This is where life becomes so easy. Because when you talk to a friend like that, would he keep quiet? He will give you a word of comfort. Word of encouragement. And he will tell you, well, don't do it next time. When you need help, you go to him in another way. Say, Lord, I need your help. Father, I need your help. Jesus, I need you to save me. I can't do this on my own. Don't leave me alone. If you leave me, I will die. I can't do without you. This is relationship. Relationship that your life depends on. So many have not come into relationships, so the voice of God is still way distant from them. Because God speaks as a father. He speaks as a friend. He speaks as your confidant. He speaks as a master. He speaks in all these ways. So some are so used to God speaking to them as a father. When God speaks as a friend, they don't have ears for that. They don't, you don't think God wants to gist with you. That will boost your relationship, your confidence a lot. When we grew up, they taught us that God is this fearful God. Of course, he is very fearful that you can't approach him. But while I was reading the scriptures, I came across something. Apostle Paul was speaking. And he said, now I can come with boldness, confidence. How do you come confidently? And there's one way, through the blood. Every relationship is possible through the blood of Jesus. And it starts by opening ourselves up to God. So a relationship with God brings us in alignment with the spirit of God. And then the Bible says that the spirit of God knows all truths. And then he begins to teach you. There are certain things I see people do and I say, ah, nobody taught me this thing. Who taught you? The Holy Spirit. Praise God. Sometimes I do certain things and I feel like, why am I even doing this thing? And then again, I see another person, a child of God, doing the same thing. And then I realize that, oh, we share something in common. What's that? The Spirit. The Spirit. Your relationship with God is possible through that Spirit. Once the Spirit comes and dwells in you. 
So we are in two categories here. There are those who don't have that relationship. Three rather. There are those who are in that relationship. And there are those who have been in that relationship. And certain situations of life have discouraged you. Why? Because you are approaching it wrongly. You see God as the all-providing God. Right? So when you have a need and it doesn't come true, you lose hope. I thought God used to provide. He doesn't provide again. You begin to murmur and to grumble like the children of Israel did. That's the time for you to switch in another way again. I say, how do I approach this God? Am I approaching God wrongly? He said to Daniel, before you started praying, I heard you. There's a scripture that changed my perspective. And that scripture is saying that it is not that his hands are too short. That they cannot help you. Not that his ears are deaf. That he cannot hear you. It's not that his eyes are blind. That he cannot see you. Again, David was speaking and he said, God who made ears. Don't you think he has ears? God who made feelings, gave you emotion. Don't you think he has it? He knows how you feel. He feels your pain even. Praise God. I'm talking about relationship with God because it goes in all areas of your life. So there are some who haven't come into that relationship with God. There are some who have been in that relationship with God and for some reasons they have, they call it backslide. And there are some who are in that relationship and they are doing well. But God wants to, you to do even much better tonight. A relationship with God is the beginning of our lifetime of supernatural existence. If you want to operate in the supernatural, it begins with a relationship with God. How do you partner with God and then you live in fear? I, is, God, God, God doesn't manifest in fear. You see, when you start being a friend with somebody, after a while, that person's character rubs on you. Is it from a distance? No, because you talk. You communicate. You rub minds together. So after a while, you see yourself start speaking like that person. And that person starts speaking like you. They start behaving like you. This is how it is. When we come into relationship with God, we start becoming like him. We start behaving even like him. The chorister sang a song yesterday. They say, Father to, Father to child, spirit to spirit. Can we sing that song? Thank you, Father. Lighted by your own. With your breath of light. That's how I come alive. That's how I change the world. One more time, father to child, father to child, spirit to spirit, spirit to spirit, lighted by your one. We the bread of life, that's how I come alive. That's how I change my world. Hallelujah. So that is how we change our world. Through a relationship with him. Father to child relationship. Spirit to spirit communication. If you want to live in the supernatural, relationship is a must have. If you want to walk closely with God like Abraham did, God said to him, he said, walk before me and be blameless. A relationship is required. How can I have this relationship with God? How can I sustain this relationship? Please be seated. How can I sustain this relationship? How can I first have this relationship? John chapter 1, verse 12 to 13. John chapter 1, verse 12 to 13. He says, but to all who believe in him or who have accepted him, that he gave them power to be called what? The sons of God. He gave them power to be called the sons of God by believing. I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe that my life is nothing without him. Should we take that declaration together and then we move to the next phase? 
Yeah, because assumption is dangerous. It's very dangerous. Jesus gave a parable. He said those people who assume one day they will appear before him and they will say to him, Lord, we healed in your name. We preached in your name. We prophesied in your name. We cast out devils in your name. Then he said to them, he said, get out from here. I don't know you. He's talking about a knowing, a relationship. I don't know you. There was no relationship. So the most important thing is relationship. So we are all going to take that prayer together. I don't want to assume that everyone is saved. I don't want to assume that everyone has a relationship with him. He says, but to all who believed in him and accepted him, because God is a gift to you. He presented himself to you. Did you accept him? He said, they who believe in him and who accepted him, then he gave them the right. That's when you can walk in righteousness. You can walk in holiness. You can walk in purity, in sanctity of mind. And again, Revelation 3 verse 20, the Bible says, Behold, I stand at the door and I am knocking. Who is knocking? Jesus. Because he's the giver of life. For anyone who will open to me, look, it doesn't matter how long you've been coming to church. As long as you don't open, he, we will not come in. It doesn't matter who your father is. It doesn't matter who your mother is. They cannot have salvation on your behalf. It's a one-on-one -on -one thing. It's between me and God. It's between you and God. So I do not want to assume that everyone is saved. So we're going to say a collective prayer. And I want all eyes to be closed. Everyone. Father to child. Spirit to spirit. Lord, I believe in you. Begin to speak to him. I believe that you died to save me. I believe that my life is nothing without you. Today, I accept you into my life. If you have accepted before, you say, I accept you again into my life. Yes, come into me, Lord. Come into my life, Lord. Be my God. Be my Savior. Be everything to me. Say, behold, I stand and I knock. If any man will open, I will come in. I will soup with him. I will eat with him. I will converse with him. Just say to him, Father, I open up today. Come, O oh Lord. Dwell in me. Be my God. Be my Father. Today, I renounce every works of darkness. I renounce the life of deceit. I renounce every life, O oh God, that is contrary to your agenda and your will for my life. I embrace your truth. I ask that you give me your spirit today. I ask that you forgive me my sins, O oh Lord. Forgive my rebellion. Forgive me, Lord. Have mercy on me. Come into my life, Lord. Yes, Father, I receive you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I believe everyone said that prayer. Whether you said it before or you are saying it for the first time, now, you say if you believe and you accept him, he gave you power to become the sons of God. So that means we are all in relationship with God. Now the relationship is established. But the second question is, how can I sustain it? I have Christ in me. Some people say, Pastor, I keep going up and down, up and down, falling and rising, falling and rising. How can I sustain this work? Like I said to you, I'm speaking practically from my experience with God. My work with God so far. John chapter 15 verse 1 to 8. This is a scripture that really transformed my life. How can you sustain it? You need to understand that God is your sustainer. And if you stay away from your sustainer, there is nothing that can sustain you. What does the Bible say? I am the true grapevine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit. We are the branch. And he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they will produce even more. How can you be sustained? You must allow God to prune you. To tell you, see, anger is controlling you here. You have to deal with it. The word of God is a scanner, we said. He will tell you, see, you are giving into sexual immorality. The spirit of lust is around you. That's how God prunes you. Pray fast. Do this thing. Study the word of God. 
is pruning you. You have already been pruned and purified by the message. That is the word that I have given you. And then Jesus says in verse 4, remain in me. In King James Version, it says, abide in me. And what? I will also abide in you. It's one on one. Hallelujah. I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is cut away from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Meaning without me, you can do nothing. You want to sustain your work with God. You don't want to fall and rise. You have to remain. And how are you going to remain in him? You have to trust him. You have to be committed. We are going to talk about that even in subsequent series. I don't want you to miss this. Because after this series, your clarity in work with God will be so sharp. There will be no confusion. I don't know what God is saying. I think maybe God is speaking to me. I think maybe God cannot speak to me. There will be no maybe again. There will be, I heard God and he told me I should go on the 10-day prayer and fasting. People don't like hearing that one. They like hearing, I will bless you. I will do this. I will do that. Oh, I heard God. He said today, you must dedicate today for evangelism like we are doing tomorrow. You don't hear God in those areas. You don't hear God when he said, take that last money you have on you. Go and buy bread for brother A, brother B, who is your neighbor who has not eaten. That is not the voice of God. We become too selective. Too selective. This one is the voice of God. No, it cannot be the voice of God. God does not speak this way. You already know how God speaks. But he said, if you remain in me, it will not be difficult. Learn to hold on to him. Ask him for help when it's hard. When I find myself struggling with a sin, there's one prayer I pray. I say, Lord, help me from my heart. I say, help me. It doesn't take long. Sometimes two days, three days. Sometimes I find it is within the same day. As long as that prayer is from a genuine heart, you really need help, he will send you help. That's how to, re I mean, depend on him. That's how to rely on him. You say, yes, I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can't do anything. When devil wants to deal with people over the years that I've seen, he pulls them away from God. First from the church. That's when people start saying, oh, the way the, that pastor preached. The pastor used to preach as if every Sunday I come to church, it's as if he is he, talking to me. No, he's not talking to you. God is talking to you. Because the Bible says that you have been purified by what? The word. If you allow the word to prune you, the word is the sanctifier, the word of God. And if you remain in that word, Jesus, your life is settled forever. When that word becomes part of your life, he said, anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Have you seen people who left the church? Have you seen their life? Do they bear fruit? Do they come and tell you that, wow, I want 10,000 souls for Christ? You won't hear such in their mouth. Because the Bible is clear. He said, anyone who does not remain in me is done what? Thrown away. It's useless. Do you want to be useless before God? Stay with him. It doesn't matter what you're going through now. Maybe you're going through addiction. You're going through a sinful habit. As long as you stay with him, he's able, more than able to deliver you. It's, see, they will throw them away like a useless branch and they will just fade away. Give them time. They will fade away. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for what? Anything. There's a condition that when you ask, you will receive. When you allow God to remain in you. Because what happens is that it is the word that prays through you. For you know not what to pray or how to pray. But the spirit groans. He knows what to pray. You begin to pray in the will of God. I'm still talking about relationship. Where it can take us to. I don't know how to pray. Come. All ye that are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Meaning, I will teach you how to pray. When the disciples didn't know how to pray, who do they go to? Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, teach us how to pray. When was the last time you went before God and said, Lord, I desire to pray, but I cannot pray. Help me. Help me. I desire to be more useful in your kingdom, but what? I don't understand what is going on with my life. Help me. You take a fast. 
on this? There are many Christians who can take a fast because they are trusting God to complete a project. They are trusting God to have money for something. But when it comes to your spiritual life, which is the most important thing, we can't take a fast. Some time ago, I was finding it difficult to pray at night as the usual time I used to pray. So, I struggled with this for some time. So, after some time, I felt a lead in my spirit. I said, just go on fast. And then I entered into that fast for a couple of days. And by the time I came out of that fast, it was like as if you just took an electric uh, stuff, what they call it, the extension, and you plug it to the socket. That's what happens. You just plug it to the socket. And then it's like, it just came again. I said, ah, where was all these things before? When you are disconnected, there's nothing you can do about it. When you see an extension cable that is not plugged to the source, there is nothing you will do that to give life. Plug all the devices in this world in it. But it is still capable. It has a potential. But they are not connected to the source. One day the Lord opened my eyes and then I saw the percentage of my prayer life. <laughs> I'm not joking. I'm not joking. It was really small. And then I say, hey, so it is this serious. If you keep ignoring the voice of God, one day he will show you something important and you ignore it. That's why many people have died untimely. Yes. Because God will reveal it to them. But because they have been ignoring God before. Uh, God, I'm talking about house strength. You are showing me prayer life. I'm talking about tuition. You are talking to me about evangelism. What is evangelism? You think your need are more important. But he said, when you produce much fruit, verse 7, sorry, go back to verse 7 again. Verse 7. But if you remain in me, and my words remain in you, meaning there is no, nothing taking that word out of you, if you continue to walk with the word of God, then you will ask anything you want, and it will be granted. Sometimes we get angry with God because we ask and we don't receive. The word of God carries the will of God. The word of God communicates the timing of God. Many times I want to pray about something. What I usually do is that I try to, to scan, to, 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 to search in the spirit. Lord, is this your will for my life? Because I believe there are certain things we shouldn't pray for if we are doing the right thing. He said, if my word remain in you, what is that word? The will of God. And the will of God has timing attached to it too. So God will let you know what you're asking for, son, is not yet time. And then you don't bother him with unnecessary prayers. But when he says it is time, then you get on your knees and you do what you need to do. That's when you pray and then instant result come and everybody is happy. Oh, God has answered. I see someone here tonight that God is restoring your relationship with him. You have been far away from God, but today God is bringing you back like a hen. We cover this, the young ones. He will protect you. The place you are running to, they cannot protect you. Because the love of God for your life or my life is unconditional. I want us to stand to our feet as we pray. I don't know how far you have gone with God. I don't know how close you are with God. But there's an assurance that we have. The Bible said this hope we have as an assurance which entereth into the vein. Say it is sure and steadfast. Nothing can shake it. So you are going to pray tonight and say, Father, establish me today in covenant with you. Establish me today in relationship with you. Establish me today in communication with you. In fellowship with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead, turn that into a prayer. Lord, establish me. Tonight, establish me. Establish me, Lord. I will not go to the left, to the right anymore. No falling and rising again. No falling, no falling anymore. Establish us, Lord. Steadfastly, Lord. Surely, Lord. 
your goodness and your mercy will follow us all the days of our lives establish our altar our prayer life establish us tonight in the name of Jesus Christ thank you father in Jesus mighty name we pray amen